Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back of his Teardown Lab. I've got this Game Boy Advance and I'm really pleased. It's an SP, but I don't have the wire. That's because previous Game Boy Advance models, the early ones, took batteries and then the NDS took uh, a charger, but this was in between. And um, this uses the same format as the NDS, but I gave away my NDS, so I'm left in limbo whilst waiting for a NDS style charger or SP style charger to USB cable. So that's going to take a while. However, I did some diggling, diggling around and uh, I came up with a pinout. This is the pinout for this right here. And you can see that pins six and three were ground and 5.2 volts respectively. And then I actually remembered I had one of these, which is, well, I have a whole load of these actually, which is a USB port because I used to uh, design dongles and that used to be part of that circuit so I thought hmm well here's a bit of variable that I just literally literally just now whittled off the bigger piece of an old project I had and I thought what happens if I try to put a piece of variable in here where the pins are and I'll just zoom in so you can see there are the pins in there it's a bit dark but you'll have to take my word for it so when I put the variable in it does sit quite nicely because I have sort of cut it a little bit just wide and when I look in the end it does look like it's touching and it certainly will touch if I put a little bit of solder on these and actually tin them up. So I thought if I plug this in like so and we know that this is ground and this is 5 volts and actually just attach this, solder these onto this thing like this, I should be able to charge this up through a USB connection. So I think we'll just go ahead and do that. And this will be our own sort of ghetto style USB charging solution. And it does so happen that I do also have my USB source and I'll just go get one of my charge doctors. And we have a charge doctor. So that'll allow us to monitor actually what's going on in case I'm gonna blow up my Game Boy. So if you've got one of these, I've, I actually just did uh, work this out by plugging this into a PC and buzzing it up. So I'll just show you what I did. Um, so I just literally just plug it into a USB connector like that. I'm going to zoom out so you can see. So it, it, pretend that's in wherever your power source is. It could be a computer, it could be something else. Then get your multimeter and <laughs> you can't see but I'm just sort of stretching across the room to go and grab these. I'm just going to put them on the uh, two outer pins because they're the ones we're really interested in. We're not interested in the data lines. And you can see 5.22 volts. So 5.22 volts in the pin nearest me. And then when I put that down there, oh, <laughs> look it, looky, look it, looky. It could be one each either way around. So yeah, mm, let me double check. So where I've got where I've got that diagram there, that must have been the back side with the line in it. Be a bit careful of that. Look, you see it's got that uh, back, you know, that line of the two dimples, which it doesn't have. Well, it does have the two dimples. We'll go by the line. Let's check this out one more time. That's that was a that was a little bit of luck because I might have just blown it up. Yeah, 5.22 volt in the pin nearest me. So if you had a permanent mark, you could mark this out that this is the live one there. So we want. Looking at the pinouts again, I'll plug our bit of variable in. We'll just double check everything. So the variable goes in quite snug, maybe too snug. No, it's about right. And we can see that the pin on the right has to be the 5 volts. The pin on the USB actually happens to be the 5 volts. So that's how we want to solder it. So we're pretty much ready to try that. We'll just leave them on the bench ready. We'll zoom in a little bit. As it's an old bit of variable, we're going to try to put some flux on it just to make sure that it's going to take the solder. And I'm possibly going to tin the end in the Game Boy end as well, so we'll just put a good bit of flux on the whole thing. Got our solder ready. I'm just going to try to tin the USB connectors. One, two, three, and four. They're ready to go. That's, that'll save some time. Holding them on the Vera board. I'm wondering how far there is actually. There's a sort of natural pegs on the bottom of the USB, so we can push it right up to that and then it will kind of lock itself in place there. We can just tack weld the end pin. 
contact solder. So you can see on the bottom that's how it's looking. That's fine, not a problem. That's looking pretty good. We'll just go do the other end. So we could kind of stop there because that's the two ends we want. But I think mechanically it will be stronger if we actually also connect the data lines. But ask yourself the question. If you're charging this in a PC, do you want those data lines going through into your Game Boy? Clearly, clearly not. So get a scalpel or something and you want to sever those tracks. Anyone working with Veriboard in the past will know that this is pretty much the standard way to work with Veriboard. You do not want, um, if you don't want sort of a track getting through, just get your uh, various knife or sort of, it's like a bit of a drill bit. The actual genuine tool is a little bit twist drill bit tool and you just go in there and you sever the tracking between the two and be very careful because you don't want to slip and then cut your tracking that you want to keep. So if you see that, that's nice, almost nice and clean. It's still a bit funky. I'll just get rid of the last bit. We'll clean that up in a moment. You'll see it thing. See it in its all its glory. But I'm going to leave this, the two uh, metal pads in there because I want them to be I want them still there to sort of close the diameter, sorry, diameter, to close the tolerance here because I do definitely want them to sort of have a better interference fit of those four pins inside there. So I'm just going to put a very light sort of tinning on these. And when I say light, I'm actually going to apply the tinning and then I'm going to take it off again. I literally just want the copper to be sort of silver coloured and then. Uh, that you know just any excess removed I don't want any real blob on there because that's going to be too much so once you've got that have a look around and get your solder braid if you've got some hopefully you will have if your solder braid isn't uh, performing make sure you put a bit of flux on the braid it will just give it uh, a little bit of extra help in wicking up that extra solder I'm just going to work it around a bit. There we go. Look at that. That's nice and shiny. I'm going to turn off the solder around. We shouldn't really need it. But what I will do before I pop that in, I'm just going to give this a little bit of a clean. Bear with me. Cleaning materials. I've kept way too far away. I'm just going to use a little bit of this just generic foam cleaner. So we'll clean our workbench while we're at it. I've got to be a bit careful of generic foam cleaner because I notice if I let it on my skin it does uh, tend to uh, irritate me slightly. Okay good. So there's the finished product right now, the finished article. I guess all that matters is the moment of truth now, but I'm going to plug it in via the charge doctor so we can see what's going on. Charge doctor is awake. 5.16 volts. You can just about see it if I tilt it properly. Don't worry, we'll we'll work about the tilting in a minute. I'm going to open the game. Well, let's, let's see if we can do it all slightly cleverly. If we look at the LEDs here, I believe the LEDs go on when it's charging. And it is, look. Well, it was, briefly. Mm. Hang on. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> Let's plug that into the Game Boy. So that's in, in a pretty solid way. Plug it into our charge doctor. And then plug that in. You can see the LED on the Game Boy is actually on. The charge doctor's down to 4.8 volts, 4.2. It's, it's sort of definitely putting some amps in 0 0.1 so well hang on about 200 milliamps it's sort of bouncing around a little bit there if you can see the screen there my apologies and that's it that is actually charging if I put the Game Boy on something it should sit there and charge nope I disturbed it again after my big discussion of removing it yeah, maybe it could just do ever so slightly more and that's exactly what we've got here let's 
there we go that did actually feel super stiff though that is too much but it worked that's good so there you go i could leave this now and let it charge <laughs> if you if you want to make something a sort of slightly better design i'd suggest maybe having this on the end of a cable um but there you go that's it it sort of does seem to do the job and if i open that up you can see for yourself that the led is on and happy absolutely brilliant i don't know when you know it's charged on these things i guess the light might go out or do something but that is my homebrew game boy ghetto style charger hope that's been of some use to you please leave some comments down below please click like if uh, you like the video and i know that uh, then i'll know to make more of these sorts of gadgets uh, feel free to subscribe and as ever Thanks for watching. Just thought I'd show you its setup. See, it's sat there on the table, plugged into the back via the charge doctor, so I can keep an eye on it. 200 milliamps at more or less five volts. And there's my power supply, USB uh, power supply. So it's all good. You just have to have a nice bench and a nice table and all the things lined up. Works great.